If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. Good day gamers. Our game is really starting to take shape. We've added movement, collisions, sprites, enemies, and last lesson we did our tiles. For this tutorial we're going to add a background, and we're also going to make the background scroll. Now we're going to scroll the background at a different speed to what the player is moving, and we call that parallax scrolling. Now if you haven't already, please like and subscribe the video, and also if you want to see anything done in drag and drop, leave a comment down below. So the first thing I want to do is change the color of the background. So let's go over and make sure we're on the background layer, click on the color, and I'm going to give you the hex value of the color that I want to use. And it's 2B5754. And the reason I've chosen that color is it matches the color of the background that we're going to use. Now the image we'll be using is called S Background Trees. You'll find it in the description below in the sprites pack. And once again, this is taken from the Open Pixel Project website. There's a link to that site down below as well. Now I'm just going to drag the image in and drop it in Game Maker, and that will then create a new sprite. So once you drag that in, that's all you need to do. Close it down. And if we go back to our room, we can now add a new background layer. So just here, add a new layer. And I'm going to call it background underscore trees. So because we've got a white color here, that's why we've now lost the background color of this one. So we want to have an image for this one. So let's choose Sprite and pick our tree. And now it comes up there at the top. So what we want to do is make sure we're stretching it horizontally. And also I'm going to change the offset and that's where it sits up and down. I'm going to set this at 100. And that'll just bring it down in line with the base. Now if we click play, we can see what that will look like. So now when we move, we have a background, but the background is static. It doesn't move at all. So let's go and create the parallax effect. So I want to do that inside O game. So let's go into there. Let's create a step event. Now remember a step event will run every step of the game. Now the layer functions I want to use to move the background are not available in the code blocks. So in order to do this, we need to use some GML, some Game Maker language. So if we go over here to the execute code block and drag that in, we do need to type this code out manually. So let's do it now. We're going to have this for our background scrolling. Firstly, we're going to get the layer ID. Each layer has its own ID, so let's grab the one for the background trees. And I'm going to store it in a temporary variable. So just like when we declare temporary variables, we can do that in the code, and we do it with the prefix var. So we're going to say layer ID is equal to layer get ID of, and here's where we put the name of the layer. So we can say back ground underscore trees. Now make sure your spelling is correct. There's no autocomplete on layer names, so you need to make sure you've typed it incorrectly. But that'll get our layer ID. Now I'm going to create another variable and we're going to set the scroll speed. And this is how quickly the background will scroll. Now the speed is set anywhere from zero to one, but if you have it at one, you won't get a parallax effect. So let's create another temporary variable. I'm going to call it scroll speed. And I'm going to set it to 0 0.7. Now when I'm typing, you'll notice I'm also placing a semicolon at the end. You don't actually need it, but it is good coding practice to put that in in GML. I suggest you do do it. And you'll also get this little mark indicating there's something wrong. And the only reason that's appearing is because I'm not using this variable anywhere else. And GameMaker is just making me aware that you're only using this variable once at the moment. So you can safely ignore that for the moment. But now let's say we want to move the layer. Now in order to move the layer, I'm going to change the X position of the layer. And we can do that with layer underscore X. Now it shows you down here what it expects us to type in for the function. So it needs the layer ID. So we've already found that. It's called layer underscore ID. And now it needs the X position that we want to put it at. So as a test, let's get the X position of the camera. And we can do that with 
camera get view underscore x and we want to get the view of which camera well the camera we created which was down here in the last lesson and it's actually called view underscore camera square bracket zero square bracket and close that and if I highlight the bracket you can see that this bracket belongs to this one it lights up this one doesn't have anything yet so you got to make sure that each bracket has another corresponding closing bracket now if I run that what we're going to see is that the camera is going to pan at the same speed as the background So the background moves the same as the player now there's no parallax it's just moving the same so we don't want that we want it to move not as quickly as the camera so we can do that by saying let's move it at a percentage of the camera and that's why we created this scroll speed so instead of the full value of the camera let's move it at only 70 percent and we can times it by the scroll speed to set it at 70 percent so let's run that and see what happens then. And now when we move, the background only scrolls at 70%. That looks great. Now you can play around with your speed, but remember one means there's no scrolling. And if you have multiple layers for your background, you can have the ones that are closer to you scroll faster than the ones in the distance. Now that's all for this tutorial. If you're interested in more GML, my tile-based course over at Udemy is all on GML. There's a coupon code that you get over 90% off in the description. And there's a great intro video which you might want to check out. So don't forget to like and subscribe this video and leave a comment on what you'd like to see in future ones. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you soon.